Class 92, McClay Finals, 387 on course. Riding to win. Whether it's the McClay Finals at the Meadowlands, the regional finals in your own area, or the local horse show circuit, riding to win is the goal of every rider who competes. At the junior level, the amateur level, or the fastest growing division of all, the 41 and over level, we who compete strive to have that perfect ride. Eight perfect fences that seem to flow effortlessly and smoothly, a melange of many parts, control, balance, pace, rhythm, and track. All of those things we practice on a regular basis. All of the flat work, the Cavaletti work, it all comes together. For some of us less often, for some of us very often, in that winning ride. Riding to Win is brought to you with the generous support of Practical Horsemen and Ulster International. Practical Horsemen, the most widely circulated and trusted English riding magazine in the United States today, offering you access to trainers and other experts in the equine world. And Ulster International, who take pride in introducing their new action boot, the most innovative front jumping boot in the competitive market today, offering superior support and protection to the equine athlete. We join Karen Healy nationally known trainer and teacher at the Southern California Riding Club. Karen will be talking to us about her teaching methods and in this video we will see portions of various lessons Karen has given while preparing her students for the desert circuit horse shows. This is a tremendous sport that can be enjoyed by people of all ages at all levels. This is a physical endeavor in order to make it easier on the horse and to have the proper use of your aids and the proper control of your body, you have to have a certain level of physical strength. Level of fitness, I would say, probably depends upon the level of your goals and the level of your expectation. My system, I believe, um, is based on the idea that anybody with the, amount of, with the proper dedication, um, a certain level of physical fitness, uh, and an interest and desire can learn to ride competently. And it's based on a solid foundation of basics, um, understanding the use of the aids, the legs, the seat, the hands, the voice, being able to control your horse at all times, being able to regulate his speed, being able to regulate his rhythm, controlling his balance, controlling his direction. The jump is basically just another stride that you, when you maintain an even rhythm, a uh, balanced, light balanced horse, and I mean that laterally as well as longitudinally, um, that the horse is straight between your legs and your hands and you maintain a specific track to the jumps, you will find that there's no such thing as a bad distance. And then you'll find that you follow these, the, the, these basic building blocks of or pace, balance, and track. If you, you stay very consistent, very relaxed, and very attuned to your, to your horse, you'll find that your horse will start to show you what to do with the jump. Instead of you having, it's not like searching on the ground for an Easter egg, you know, to find the distance. You, you let the horse show you what to do. What I'm gonna do for the purpose of this video is I'm gonna give you a demonstration of a flat lesson. Um, this is not going to be in real time. We're gonna, we're gonna condense things and go a little bit faster than what you normally would do. And I'm gonna probably ask a lot more things of a horse than I would normally ask in a, in a flat lesson. If the purpose of the flat is to prepare the horse to jump, is to supple him, bend him, make him elastic, make him like an accordion, make his, be, you feel that he's straight and soft and relaxed to the legs and the hands. And then um, what I'm going to show is I'm going to show different exercises, the different things that I do to attain the degree of suppleness and elasticity that I want to have over the jumps. We're going to show a little haunches in, a little shoulder in, transitions, broken lines, counter canters. Again, we're doing way more things in this little condensed version that you would ask than you would ask your horse to do in one warm-up. I'm going to show you most of the things that you can possibly do. So in each warm-up you would take two or three or four of these different exercises and use them to prepare your horse to jump. Make a transition to a walk. 
Transitions are the best way to test your horse's brakes and trot. In the transitions, the horse should drop backwards onto his hindquarters. He should stay relaxed in his pole and his jaw. Before she starts the transition, she steps into her heel, sinks into the saddle, shoulders come back to the vertical, halt. Square and flexed, not rooting, not pulling. Trot forward. Let's try just thinking, trot. The amount of leg, the degree of leg depends basically on the temperament of the horse. Now make a circle here. On the circle, we're feeling that the horse is tracking. He's not overbent. He's balanced on the, ins on the outside rein. Make another circle. He's bent a little more around the inside leg. He's bent in the degree of the turn. Go straight. Moving him back out onto the rail a little more. And make a circle at a sitting trot. Using the weight in your heel to draw your seat down. Your shoulders are on the vertical. We've got a direct line from elbow through hip to heel. Watching that your elbows stay in front of your body. Transition to a walk. Now at the walk, this is one of my favorite exercise. A favorite exercise is a haunches in. As you increase the leg to move the horse laterally, their first reaction will be to get faster. As you ask for lateral movement, sideways movement, you have the hands close against the mouth. The horse stays bent in the direction that he's traveling, which is to the left. His right haw, the her right hind leg will slip back about three or four inches behind the girth and put the haunch a little to the inside. Now make a turn on the haunch. A great preparation. Now the right hind tracks around the left hind. The horse continues to walk forward. Trot forward sitting. and halt, square and immobile. Make a turn on the forehand. If he roots, a little nip. Now your left leg shifts back a couple of inches and pushes the haunch. He shouldn't back up. He shouldn't walk forward. Now walk forward out of it. Sitting trot. Come down the center line of the ring on a broken line. This tests the straightness of the horse. He bends a little to the left rein and leg, and then to the right rein and leg, and then to the left rein and leg. Go to your posting trot. We're making a horse through the broken line exercise you make a horse straight through bending. Now show a little extension to the trot. Now you feel that the stride doesn't get faster, but it gets longer. There, build it up a little bit. Each step asking for just a little more. Make a circle at a collected sitting trot. Now drop deeper into your saddle. Draw your shoulder back 
and draw your horse back to you. And come down the center line. Down this other center line. Making a little half pass to the left. And then we'll do it again and we'll make a half pass going to the right. Now collect the trot. Bend him a little right. Collect him. He shouldn't canter. This horse is a little stiff to the left. So when you put your left leg on him, he'll sometimes want to hop up and down a little bit. Very good. After lateral work, always go forward. Don't do lateral work for hours and hours and hours and hours. Do lateral work, go forward. Collect the trot sitting. And halt. All right, now back him. Taking and giving. Take him when he backs, walk forward, walk forward. When a horse backs, he should give in his pole and his jaw and shift his weight back onto his hocks. Halt. I always like to introduce the shoulder in coming off a circle because you've already got the horse in the proper position. Through the circle, he's bent to the right rein and right leg. Now on the straightaway, he maintains that bend. You feel him on three tracks. Right front, right hind, left front, Left hind, finish it with a circle. You'll make a circle to the left, preparing him for a little shoulder in. He comes forward a little bit and are bent around your left rein and leg. Staying balanced on the right. Now he's a little stiffer to the left. We'll see how good she gets it here. And then left front, left hind, right front, right hind. Very good. Make a half turn in reverse. And we're going to show haunches in. Haunches in is my favorite exercise because this is how a horse should come through a corner to a jump with his weight balanced back on his hindquarters. Moving from the outside leg, bent a little bit to the inside rein. And all lateral work, the seat is a little deeper, the shoulder is on the vertical, a little haunches in. Very good. Very good. And at the end of the side, make a half turn. And with a half pass, come back to the track. There. There. Keeping the rhythm to the trot as he moves diagonally across, he maintains his rhythm. As you ask a horse to canter, you put them almost in a little haunches in. Bent a little to the inside rein. Your right leg will push the haunch slightly to the inside and canter. And canter. Now you want to see at the canter. A very soft, again, soft, light, balanced horse. She's got to be very careful to stay very deep with her seat. And as she stays deep in her seat, a little hollow in her lower back. So her shoulders are back over her hips and her arms are following the rhythmic motion of the stride. Make a circle. 
Again, on the circle, he's tracking perfectly straight. Left hind, left front. Right hind, right front. And as the arms are soft, the hand maintains a light, steady connection with the mouth. Transition to a walk. Now at the walk, make a walking turn on the forehand. This is not an exercise that they really call for much in the show ring, but you bring the haunch in, moving it around the shoulder, and the horse's front end keeps stepping. There, it's just educating them to legs. Canter. Lengthen the stride. Get them very long. And now very short. Make a half turn. And hold them on the counter lead. Shift his shoulders out and make a flying change of lead. Collect at the canter, put his haunches in and make a volte with the haunches in. A volte is a very small circle about 20 feet in diameter outside leg. Make a half turn in reverse. Diagonally in off the rail, holding the counter lead. There. Put the shoulders out. Flying change. Very good. Very good. Go back to a trot. Horse that's been properly worked will reach for the ground a little bit. Yes. Air and walk. I use Cavalettis a lot in my flat work and I use them also as introductions to jumps and even as part of the exercise in the jumps because just about anything that a horse will do, a horse that wants to drift left or drift right or a horse that wants to pull or root or you have difficulty shortening, just about anything a horse will do at a jump, he will probably do at a cavaletti. But you can do cavalettis, you can do rails on the ground, you can do them every single day that you ride. You can do them and you can practice them over and over and over again. And it simulates a jump, but it doesn't take out of the horse what a jump takes out of them. Every horse only has so many jumps in them in a lifetime. And you, by, by using the cavalettis, you can simulate what's going to happen at a jump and get a feel of it without the physical fear of the jump itself, worrying about missing the distance, worrying about what might happen, but developing a feel for establishing rhythm, establishing a track, maintaining a straight, light, balanced horse. You can feel all of those things happening at a Cavaletti. What you want to see here is the rider controlling the balance of the horse with the outside rein. Their inside rein is going to be turning them so that they stay on the track of the circle. The outside rein balance, like I said, balances, places the stride, and they fit one short stride between the jumps. This requires a very short, light, balanced horse. The right hand should open a little bit and direct them so that you can, they continue forward at the canter. They, the canter goes forward, the right hand won't stop the horse. You'll find that all horses are a little more one-sided than the other. And you'll find that your horse, it'll be easier going to the right or to the left. Whichever is the hardest, practice that one the most. But again, you wanna place, shorten, and place the stride the same time guiding the horse with your inside rein to the center of the rails. You're gonna be a hair to the outside, left hand turning, outside leg will be back just a little bit. Hold them out, but bring the shoulders in.
I, I feel that you need to learn to ride properly on the flat before you can learn to really find the jumps and to really have an understanding about your horse's balance and really be able to feel when your horse is straight and when your horse is heavy and when your horse is to the left or when he's to the right. You have to feel those things on the flat before you're able to properly affect them over the fences. This next exercise is a great exercise to help understand track and direction. The idea of the opening rein to give direction without taking away from the forward movement of the horse. The distances between these cavalettis are a little bit long and you can see that the two girls when they use a direct rein to try to guide the horse, or steer the horse, that the horse will not get the two strides in between the cavalettis. When they do it properly with the proper use of opening reins, the horse's stride continues forward. There needs to be a little bit of fear in riding because this is an inherently dangerous sport. I mean, you're dealing with a large animal, you're jumping large fences. You have to have a very healthy respect for what can happen. You have to have, you have to develop a trust in your horse. You have to develop a trust in your instructor, your trainer. You have to develop a sense of trust that it will be all right. If I do the right things, it will be okay. But in the back of your mind, you also, you, you have, like I said, have a healthy respect for the animal itself, the, the sheer bulk and the weight of the animal, the speed that you're traveling. I mean, the things can happen, and that's why I believe in a very strong system of riding that promotes safety. Use this exercise quite a bit to teach people about finding distances off of turns and riding turns correctly about really understanding the horse's balance and his track through the turns. So I want the horse to be moving here through this part of the turn from the inside leg to the outside hand. Now as she looks in and finds her track, outside leg and a little outside bearing rein, Bring the shoulder in. She balances in the turn as she starts with the left opening and right leg to the distance. And right away, he moves out. The outside rein becomes the balancing rein. Inside rein, outside rein. Controlling shoulder and track through the turns. The tighter the turn, the deeper the seat. Watch the use of the seat and the rain aids. Right here, a little deeper seat. Left opening rain, right leg. There, there, till he comes out and makes a clean, balanced change. You're getting him light, getting him straight. Feel the hindquarters underneath you, and that's what happens when you open your fingers. Close the fingers. Sink in a little bit. Right leg, left rein, there, and left leg. Do you get a clean change through a tight turn with balance? Not having him fall out. Left bearing rein, left leg, right opening rein, that's it. Right leg, right there, yes, and walk. This next exercise, what we're going to see, is lengthening and shortening of the horse's stride. You want to be able to make your horse like a rubber band. 
His stride should lengthen, his stride should close. You want to develop what we call a range to his stride, that any distance will work out. A little long, a little short. What we have here is a, d a jump set immediately out of the turn, a very forward three strides to a narrow jump, and then a very short five strides to an oxer. You'll see some of the riders are a little abrupt in their transitions. You'll really see them come forward and you'll be a little rough coming back. The most important thing is that first you get it done. You have to first override before you can underride. You have to be strong in order to be soft. This horse has a huge stride, but if the rider doesn't stay out in the turn, she doesn't allow him to use his stride. Now she gets the distance, rides right up in the three, underestimates the five, and leaves in four. It's too long. You've got to create a little pace. And you create pace first. Find your track, then distance. Pace first. Because the problem is a little forward and then it's short. You can't cut in. If they cut in, it shortens the stride. Keep going, keep going. Don't pull out. Don't pull out. Go down the line. I know you chipped in. This is a, quite forward for this horse. Now steady. That was pretty good. Right rein. Now steady. Steady. That was very good. Right rein. Now steady. And you see you've got to fit it better. You've got to fit it better. This horse has no range. Go do it again. He's either very fast or he's very short. You've got to develop a range to the stride. They've got to lengthen. They've got to shorten. Priya, you put your stick in your right hand because this horse has a right bulge to him. If you chip in, send him forward a little bit till he learns to land and go right to the next jump. Just get pace. Get track. Go on. Pace now. Now you don't need more pace. Look. Right up it. Now steady. Yes. Yes. See, you've got to test yourselves. You've got to try things. This is long. This is forward. This is then it's short. You've got to test yourselves at home. Water is, a, is really a big problem with horses. Horses are naturally a little bit afraid of it. This particular water jump that I'm standing in front of is a very, very spooky jump. It's a black jump, which makes it even spookier than the blue ones because it really looks like a big black hole. Now, it requires a little bit of a strong ride. It requires you never, ever, ever take a water jump for granted. Even on the very best horse, you want to drop behind them a little bit, get into them a little bit, and be ready with a leg and a cluck. Hold your track, Jenny. You can't shift off your track. All right, all right. Pat him, pat him, pat him. Let him settle. When they do it, then relax. Again, horses are herd animals. Giving a horse a lead makes them a little braver if they're a little afraid of something. Don't take it for granted. Leg. There, pat him. Never take a water or a natural obstacle for granted. Oh, now it's a little different. Leg him, leg him, pull on, come on. Leg him, pull on that 
right rein. Pull on it. Lay back a little bit. Put your weight now, you drop behind him. Drop behind him. There, yes. Just let him counter it. There you go. We're now going to ride six strides on a bending line to the liver pool with two strides on a little angle to a wall. So we have a two stride in and out with the liver pool as the in of the in and out. The rider has several problems here. First is maintaining the, the stride on the bend. This goes back to the exercise that we did over the Cavalettis on the circle of being able to accurately regulate the length of the stride and keep track of where the horse's stride is on a bending line rather than just a straight line. The in of the in and out is the liver pool, which is spooky, and the out is on a little bit of an angle. So they've got to be ready to get into them a little bit over the liver pool, open the left rein, guide them right out over the wall. See the eyes working? There. The rider must establish a pace, find their balance, gallop up the six, and wool in the two. This next horse is a little green, so she's got to get right down into them, ride them right across it. It doesn't matter if it's a little rough to start. She's got to get it done. You'll get it. There, you got it, yes. There, easy. There, yes. Yes, Jenny, very good. After all the hours of practice at home, Karen's students are finally ready to test themselves, to put the pieces together, so to speak. This year, Karen Healy and her students are headed to Indio, California, to the Desert Circuit. With 1,400 horses and nine rings, this is one of the largest horse shows in the country, offering a challenge to all riders. Karen will be taking students of all ages and levels. Part of Karen's philosophy is that you show while you're continuing to learn. Showing provides another dimension to riding which is quite different from the lesson at home. At the show, you enter the ring and you have one shot at it. You cannot stop to think about problems or mistakes. Showing demonstrates best the success of Karen's philosophy. You must do the steps. You have to have done your homework. You must use the concepts you've practiced at home. Control. Okay, ride up to the oxer. Press her into the second oxer and then roll a little at the verdict. Balance. And balance back. They're going to move away. Pace. I don't want you going crazy. I want you just to pattern around the course. Rhythm. Stay on the one star. And track. You want to find the track land and press right up. Waking up early the day of the show and giving a 6 a.m. lesson is one of Karen Healy's trademarks. Covered with coolers, the horses make their way to the ring in the early morning dawn. This day at Indio, morning showers gave way to an afternoon of glorious sunshine, clear, clean, and awash with the myriad colors of the California desert. The riders begin by warming up on the flat, but move more quickly to jumping than they would at home. The horses will be working hard. So Karen wants to warm up quickly, and most importantly, practice a few things she anticipates will face the riders in the show ring. Then it's back to the barn for the horses, and time for the riders to walk the course. All right, this course is the equitation finals of the Desert Circuit, the championship course. This is the culmination of six weeks of preparation and testing we're going to test the riders and really see where they are, what they've accomplished, what they've attained. This is really, this course has many options, it has many problems. They have distance problems, we have directional problems. There are some spooky jumps, there are long gallops, there are turns. When you walk a course, I like to separate the course into parts. I like to take each jump or each group of jumps by itself, not try to think of the whole thing all at one time. Jump number one, then maybe a breather, and then two to three to four will be related. Then you have a breather. Five to six to seven will be related. Then you have a breather. 
Then you have a combination of 8A, B, and C. Then we have a breather. Then we have jumps 9 and 10, which involves direction. Then we have a spooky jump with a, with, with a blind turn, which is a hidden jump, which creates a problem. And then finish up again over a directional problem. You have to decide when you're walking what best suits your horse and your rider's experience. Can they make the inside turn and still find the best distance? Can they leave the stride out and do it beautifully and effortlessly and comfortably? It doesn't do any good to leave a stride out and have your horse leave off of three legs like we saw the one do in the, the lengthening and the shortening exercise. They left a stride out, but it was a dangerous jump. They've got to smoothly lengthen, they've got to smoothly shorten. You've got to decide whether you want to do a four or whether you do a five, whether you do a three, whether you do a four. Does your horse drift right or does he drift left? The courses today are very technical, but they've also, we've gotten rid of the simple scope tests where you had to have the biggest, longest strided horse in the world in order to be able to win a finals like this. The course is now, you can, like I said, you can adjust the ride to suit your horse and do what best suits you. This line that we're walking right now is an option. It can be ridden in either a direct forward four or a bending five. You're going to see my two riders do this both ways. Both ways are going to be beautifully ridden, but one is a little bit of a greener rider on a horse that jumps way to the right and the other is on a horse that jumps to the left with a little bit more experience. We go on from here, and then we, we, the next jump is what we talk about is the, is the problem of a hidden jump or a blind turn. They have to go around the liver pool before they'll see this narrow jump on jump number 11, this narrow jump on the end of the ring. So the horse will tend to want to spook away a little bit from the liver pool. They really will have to block them a little with their outside leg and get their focus on this fence. All right, at this point in the course, we're coming right towards the in gate. Your horse is probably going to be fairly strong. This line, again, is an option of a, a four or a five. I like the four, but again, it involves direction because the horse has got to stay to the left and really jump across this on an angle. I, I think the four is the best option. The five is going to ride very, very snug at this point in the course. Take that for granted. You really ride the track. See, that's not the track. It's not the track for the nine to ten. You gotta stay out. Jump across it. I get five there. You're gonna do a steady climb. Free joining us now. This is Mary Jane Linkelbach from Laguna Beach. This girl's a little bit of a greener rider. This is the first year she's doing these equitation courses. This line is very specific about direction. It's you've got to ride right up in the six and look to the right. Her horse lands left. She won't get the five strides because her horse lands to the left. Her eyes aren't quick enough. Her reaction isn't quick enough. Here she makes a little bit of a green distance mistake about riding up to the triple bar, but the horse is wonderful, pricks his ears and just canters right on down through the spooky in and out, and then right on ahead to the next jump. All right, through the combination, you can see the intermediate quality of her riding. Her release is a little bit high, drops back a little bit in the air. This is the option line. This horse is going to do the five strides beautifully on a bend. You can see she rides a perfect track there. Then we have the narrow, the spooky jump on the end of the ring. And again, now you'll see where she doesn't hold his direction and she doesn't get the four. Kristen Posehn will be our next entry, number 1104, joining us now. This girl's a very accomplished rider on a finals winner. 
And she's got a beautiful seat and a beautiful style, a very authoritative approach to the first jump. Now you can see the use here of her eyes, much better use of her eyes and her reins. She rides right up the four strides beautifully where Mary Jean didn't get it. Now here, the horse, one thing that he does is he shifts a little left and swaps off his lead and she grabs him a little too hard with the right rein but gets it done. And it maintains beautiful style and balance on down to the oxer. Through the combination, again, notice the difference in her hand position, her body. You don't see her hands. They're invisible. She's not ahead of her horse. She's right with the horse. Her horse will get the four. She finds the track. You can see the angle. Right up it in the four strides easily and a beautiful jump. And it balances, blocks his left side, gets his eye looking right relaxes to the distance and she comes around the turn lines it up and she will get the four strides right on the angle this is a beautiful ride Kristen Posehn scores an 86 and that is our winning ride but where did you land 86 what, what? 86, what did I say what for Kristen Posehn. no I said jump the left side of the first jump coming in to the center to the right. I jumped that one left. I know you jumped it left. So when you jumped it left, that is a direct forward five strides. If you don't understand, Major, because you have a, you know, you haven't done this as much as these other kids have, and they understand when I say direct. You, if you don't understand, you've got to tell me I don't understand. Mm -hmm. You've got to tell me I don't understand or I'm not sure. So you really understand the track. These are very technical courses. It's not just about jump number one, two, three, and how many strides it is. It's about the track. You've got to understand the track. You've got to understand positioning of the horse's body to get you the distance. Very good. Very good. It'll all come. <laughs> Steps and stages. <laughs> I love to show. To me, horse showing is, is like a test. I mean, it's a test to see how good you are, what do you know, what do you have to work on. A lot of us are involved with qualifying for indoor horse shows. To me, there's the horse shows that you go to because you need to pick up a medal or a McClay, or you need to, you know, you need to accumulate some points. And they're the horse shows that are true competitions. And those are the ones that really are a gauge as to where you are in your riding, as, and how many questions can you answer. And to me, the horse shows are just that. It's a, it's a test. What do I know? What do I have to learn? How much more does that person know than I know? It's not even necessarily whether you win or lose. Everybody wants to win. I mean, trust me, I want to win as much as anybody does. I mean, the ultimate goal of showing is to win. But the week-to-week -week horse shows throughout the year are barometers of where you are in your progress. Anytime you enter into any kind of a competition, you're putting yourself on the line in front of, you know, an audience. I mean, are you going to be good enough? Are you going to measure up? And there's a tremendous amount of fear that goes into that as you're standing at the end gate. Am I going to get it done? Am I going to, am I going to get that line done? Am I going to see that distance? You have to be able to control that, regulate it, to win big, you have to be able to, you have to be ready to risk big. To really, really be successful, you've got to want it that badly. It's got to mean that much to you, but it can't, it can't mean so much that a mistake then shuts down your reflexes and shuts down your instincts. I mean, you're going to make a million mistakes in your riding career. So you have to learn from mistakes and progress from mistakes and, you know, like I said, to, to, and hopefully you don't make that mistake again. We're all in it because we want to win. But I truly believe that we can't lose sight of the fact that um, the, the main reason we do this is because we really love the animals and we really, the enjoyment that you get out of just simply riding the horse and jumping the horse and just being around the horses is something that uh, a ribbon cannot replace. I always say don't practice what you can do, practice what you can't do. You know, once you become comfortable at one thing, then do something else. But you are the responsible party. It's like the driver of the car. You're the responsible.
responsible party. Nobody can get it done but you. I don't care how much instruction I give you if you don't physically pull on the reins and if you don't get a reaction with six ounces of pressure, go to six, go to 10 ounces of pressure. Go to a pound, go to five pounds. Increase the aid until you get the reaction that you want. Good riding is good riding. Under, you know, seat, hands, legs, use of the aids, control of the horse. Those are all things that can be learned. When you land off of the jump, step into your heels, draw your body back and just bring his weight up and back and then just relax a little. And then just relax a little. Again, our thanks to Practical Horsemen, the nation's number one how-to English riding magazine. Call for a subscription now. And Ulster International, who is proud to introduce their new Action Boot, which provides the ultimate in tendon support and protection for your equine athlete.